everyone. This is the first video on uh, Unit 1 Properties of Matter. We are going to be looking at several things in this unit. This unit is actually more of an introduction unit than anything else. Um, it is surprisingly nice um, in terms of content. Um, so we're going to be looking at the scientific method and why chemistry is a central science. Um, and that's really what we're going to be focusing on in this video. Um, I like to keep the videos kind of short, so that's really how we're going to be working on this one. So even though this is the outline for the entire unit, here's where we're going to be focusing in this video. Now, the whole point of chemistry, the reason that we make students learn it is because it is so relevant. Uh, chemistry is just the study of matter, which is anything that takes up space and has mass, which is everything. It's the study of everything. Um, here we're also going to be looking at its chemical reactions. Um, we're going to get into chemical structures and composition in the unit two. Um, and we get into, as we get past that, we even get into the biochemistry and the medical applications later on in the semester. So it's going to be really fun. So just remember chemistry is the study of matter. Uh, matter is anything that has mass and takes up space. Um, the gases that we're breathing, the food that we're eating, everything that really exists except for ideas is matter. Matter is, uh, at this point, we say that it is still made up of tiny particles called atoms. If you had chemistry in middle school or high school, we used to say that the smallest particles of matter are atoms. That's no longer true. We know a little bit more now. Um, but everything is made up of atoms. Atoms can bond together to form molecules. And we're going to uh, be focusing on molecular structures next unit, I believe. Um, and the idea is, you know, we can talk about this microscopic atom, but what really comes into play is when you have enough molecules, enough atoms present, you can see them, you can interact with them, and you can really learn more from them. Um, so with that in mind, we're going to be playing a lot with this microscopic versus macroscopic um, idea. Now I do this in 111 too. I'm just kind of kind of point out what does that mean? Well, microscopic we typically know is really 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 small, um, something like an atom of water here, and we could talk about how the the individual atoms bond together, the bond angles, which we will. Um, but it's really kind of hard for students to see uh, this microscopic concept as really being important. And so what we're going to do is we're going to look at this microscopic molecule and then we're going to come in and show why is it that that matters. Um, and we're going to do that by looking at the macroscopic version. So here I've got the water molecule, here I've got the glass of water. By understanding this microscopic molecule, we can come over and really evaluate what we're noticing, what we're observing with this macroscopic class of water or um, even, you know, lakes and so on. So just remember, um, you know, even though it doesn't seem like it, chemistry really is going to be super important for really everything. Um, one of my biggest pet peeves is when you have to learn something and we don't tell you why. And so as we cover concepts this semester, I'm going to pull in, guys, this is where you use it every day. Um, in fact, I just got the water quality report um, for where I'm at right now. And I learned all kinds of new things. So just remember that it does matter. I'm going to tell you why it matters. And chemistry is, at least to me, the most important science. And that's because it's the central science. 
Now I saw this really complicated image on uh, Wikipedia the other day. I was looking for a Creative Commons resource that showed why chemistry matters. Um, and I just kind of got overwhelmed and so I decided to make a simpler one here. Um, so we're looking at chemistry, okay? Now some of you are funeral science majors, some of you are pre-nursing, some of you are just non science majors. It doesn't really matter. The point is when you study chemistry, you are getting an introduction and a gateway into everything. For example, you can't have agriculture without understanding um, energy flow, and I cannot wait to show you guys that in that unit. Um, you also can't under, really study true agriculture unless you look at the chemical composition of fertilizers and the moisture retention of soil. You can't have um, you look at the energy industry and they spend a lot of time looking at how to to um, capture that's not the word I want but get as much energy as possible out of each uh, resource we have they also look at how you can save energy what the energy flow does and so on um, polymers plastics that is all chemistry. Um, there's huge money to be made in that industry. Um, polymers for both biomolecules and for plastics are just super relevant, super important, but you have to understand the molecular structure of those and the molecular reactions of those to determine what kind of plastics, what kind of molecule would be the best for each application. Biology, I love biology, oh, actually I, that's really not true. Um, I like biology now. I appreciate it, but I hated it in school um, because of all the memorization. But you know, the idea is biology is a study of cells and animals and you know life in general. Um, but you can't have life without cells, and cells come from molecules. You know, so we have to really talk about the molecular structure of those components of a cell to really truly understand the biology of a cell. In fact, my old advisor is um, running a research program right now where they are doing a mathematical computation of a cell. Um, super duper complicated, uh, but it's, gonna, it's really going to be interesting if they can get it truly working to see uh, how a cell responds under different stresses, how do you treat medically different cells, stuff like that. And of course, medicine, one of the last units we do this semester talks about medical applications of chemistry and drugs. Um, that is probably one of the most interesting units, but we really can't talk about it until we get through organic chemistry and we start talking about uh, how these structures and reactions play together. Um, nanoscience. Um, there's so many advisors out there that are dealing with uh, nanoparticles and their applications for all kinds of things. Um, you know, and it, it's the sky's the limit there. But engineering, environmental science, they all relate back to chemistry. I could go on and on, but you know, that's probably not what you want to hear right now. Now, if we're talking about chemistry, uh, one of the things that I've really learned about students is they hate chemistry. And it's not the content that you hate, it's that you don't know, um, or you think you don't know how to think like a scientist. And that's just not true. Um, you do scientific reasoning all the time, every day. And so one of the things that scientists do is we gather and information and it's one thing to gather information it's completely another thing to characterize it um, you know I could talk about a lot of things but I think it was um, it was a few years ago now uh, the government had a, a subpoena where they collected the phone records for an entireless entire wireless company um, I don't know if you can imagine um, how many millions of people have belonged to each wireless company, and this is one of the bigger ones. Um, they collected all phone records for all users. Now, in my head, I kind of think about this poor guy behind a desk who is buried under a whole building of papers containing the phone calls, the text messages, the dates and times of everything that was sent by every user for like that month or so. Um, 
it's not enough to gather it. You have to really know what are you looking for. Generally, you're looking for um, a specific tidbit or you want to really understand what that information means. And so in order to do that, we have to really be scientific in how we ask questions. What are we doing? And so part of that is we're going to continually question the world of what we think we know. Um, you know, if if we don't, we'll never learn anything new. You know, we would still think atoms are the smallest part of matter, and it's just not true. Now, scientific method, we're going to follow a scientific process, which is pretty much the same for everybody. Um, this is a general trend. Um, generally, you make an observation. And I'm going to pull in a real world example here because I want you to see what I'm talking about when I say, you guys do this. Um, so let's say, let's make an observation. You come home, you go, you pick up the remote, you aim it at the TV, you hit the power button, the TV doesn't come on. So your observation is, hey, the TV didn't come on. So that you, you made that observation and now you could form a um, hypothesis, okay? Um, a hypothesis is just a possible explanation. Um, usually it's done in like an if-then type of statement where, you know, well, if the batteries in the remote are broken, the TV wouldn't come on when you hit the power button on the remote. You know what I mean? Um, and so you could say, okay, well, that's my hypothesis. The batteries in the remote are broken, so it's not going to work to turn on the TV. So then the idea is you want to perform an experiment to try and disprove your hypothesis. You want to be your own biggest critic. You're not just going to throw the remote on the couch and say, oh, well, it's broken and move on with your life. Generally, you're going to go find some batteries, replace the batteries and try again. So you change the batteries, you aim it at the TV. Hey, the TV still didn't work. So it did not agree with our hypothesis. So you come over and you start again. So you can kind of tell it forming a hypothesis. You can change your mind. You can change your hypothesis very quickly. It's just an idea. So maybe your new hypothesis is maybe the TV's not plugged in. So you would perform an experiment to try and disprove that. Hey, let's go make sure the TV's not plugged in. So you go see if the TV's plugged in. It is. So that's not going to be agreeing with your hypothesis. You, tell you come in, you say maybe uh, maybe the um, sensor was blocked, so you could check to make sure there was nothing blocking the remote to the TV. Um, you could check the breaker in, you know, the utility room, whatever. The idea is you continually change your hypothesis and perform an experiment until you get results that agree. Once you have a result that agrees, you are not finished. We're never going to be like, oh, great, you, you found that. That's true. No, we're going to make you do, prove it. And a general rule of thumb is you have to prove it a lot. Um, in lab, it's two to three trials. If you want to print a paper, it's somewhere between five and 20, depending on your field. And it is a continual process. So when you have a ton of experiments that really support your data, at that point we call it a theory. The th a scientific theory is something that might be true, maybe, um, but you don't really believe it. After a certain number of years and a ton of experiments, a ton of data, um, you would eventually be able to say that your new thing was a law. There are very few scientific laws, guys. Um, gravity is one of them. Um, you probably realize if you were to stand up and drop your pen, um, it's going to fall to the floor. Um, you could do that every second, every minute for the rest of your life, and gravity is going to continue to work. You're just going to have to keep picking up your pen. Um, and so the idea is a hypothesis is a um, possible explanation that changes very quickly. You can adjust that based on your experiment. Um, a theory is something that has been shown to be a possible explanation after several um, experiments. And a law is something that is considered to probably be true. So why is it important to try and disprove rather than prove your hypothesis? At this point, I usually say, you know, for every concept quiz, 
really pause and try and think of it yourself. Now granted this is a concept. It's not like a mathematical problem. It's not a true um, thing. It's just an idea. But really hit pause and test yourself here guys. If you're just listening to me and you're going to let me tell you the answer for each one of these, it's not going to benefit you in the long run. When you get to the test, you're really going to be stumped because you haven't forced yourself to struggle. Okay. Now, um, remember that in terms of, uh, kind of think about this the same as like, you know, you stand up in class and you say, hey, I know this. You want to be your own worst critic. You don't want to just throw out something willy nilly. You kind of want to um, make sure that you don't sound silly. Um, same concept here. Um, you want to be your own worst critic. And in science, guys, if you really don't try and disprove your hypothesis, um, you can get in huge trouble. Um, there was a guy a few years ago, it may be more than a few, I don't remember how old the article was now, um, but the the um, he published a couple papers on something he said happened in his bench top. Nobody could replicate it. Uh, he basically lost his funding, his job, and his entire career. Um, so in addition to not wanting to look f foolish, you you really are staking your scientific career on some of your, your things. So what's the difference between a hypothesis and a theory? And again, you want to, I want to, I would like you to pause me and try and answer that. But remember, a hypothesis is just an idea. It's a possible explanation. It changes very quickly, um, and you have not tested it yet. A theory, on the other hand, is a hypothesis that has stood up to uh, experimental testing. Give one situation where you've used the scientific method in the last 24 hours. Guys, I can't tell you, I get so many of these ideas in my face-to-face -face class. I love it. Um, last semester, I got uh, one with, you know, where did I leave my keys? And I got another one that had to do with, um, he was a mechanic, so he was a little bit more technical than I'm going to be here, but why won't the car start? And, uh, you know all kinds of different ones. Why is the baby crying? You know, there's all kinds of different things where you really do think scientifically, even if you're not going to give yourself credit for doing that. This concludes the video on chemistry as a central science and the scientific yeah. method. Um, thanks for watching.